Good afternoon, friends. Stephen and Yana Benoon, and uh, we are here, Israeli News Live, and we have a couple of guests on with us this, uh, today. Uh, today is September, I believe it's the 22nd, 2024, uh, on a Sunday afternoon, and we have with us uh, Kim and Brian, and uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about their testimony, about changes that have happened to them in life in regards to their personal beliefs uh, from a biblical view uh, and some of the changes that they made and why they made those. So I'm going to turn this over to my wife a little bit so she can kind of kick this off and then we'll just go from there. Well, welcome, Kim. Welcome, Brian, on our show today. And we are here to and Brian's muted, by the way, Brian, just so you know, you can go, you can just stay unmuted the entire time with just being the three of us, it won't be a problem. Yes, we are here today to share your journey. Uh, we have made video last week about our journey out of Zionism to Christ and uh, what is your personal journey? So what I would ask first is Kim, ladies first. So, uh, what tell us a little bit about yourself where what were your beliefs in the past and when did you start noticing things and coming out of dispensational zionist worldview well first of all thank you for having me i really appreciate it um it's nice to be able to tell my my story um i I grew up without any sort of religious instruction at all and in a secular family and um, we, we were not churchgoers. And then uh, <clears throat> when I was in my early 20s, um, I was contacted through the door-to-door -door ministry by Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm -hmm. And so I must have been about 24 when I got baptized. And so I was a Jehovah's Witness for 27 years, a faithful, you know, a core believer. Um, and I, you know, I was happy being a Jehovah's Witness. And then, um, the, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses aren't, I don't think, are dispensationalists as such. But um, I started to see things that weren't weren't really coming together they were didn't make sense mm -hmm. and they weren't um supported by by scripture actually i started reading the bible with a different lens as you say sometimes yana yeah and um so i left and i i left in 2021 and i had to write a, a letter of disassociation which is one of the things that that watchtower and jehovah's witnesses um they don't require it but in order of for a person who wants to leave the organization to get them to leave you alone and stop harassing you right is it, it's necessary to do that and um so that's what I did and so I was I was really like I had no foundation of belief I had I was really having to re rebuild my my belief system from the ground up and so I got in con eventually got in contact with some Jehovah's Witnesses, ex-Jehovah's Witnesses that had a, a, um, a private online Bible study. And I was invited to that, which um, I really enjoyed it. And they taught dispensationalism. So this is my first real um, exposure to dispensationalism. And, uh, you know, I, I enjoyed it and I, I listened and I participated and um then this this was a run-up prior to the events of October 7th 2023 so um I was fully believing that uh 1948 was a fulfillment of prof bible prophecy and then um they taught a doctrine about a land promise that um Israelite or is Israelis, um, Jewish people in general, were bestowed upon by God, and they were still there was still this covenant in in um, working. This covenant was still active the, with with the land promise, and um, you know, and I believed it. And then uh, 
then the, the then October seventh happened, and I started looking for information about um, Christian Zionism, and that those were the the search terms that I used when I started trying to find more information on it, on it. And then that's when I came upon your videos, Steve. So this and, is pretty recent then, Kim. Yes. Because it, October 7 happened and you were seeing what's happening in Gaza, I yes. guess. You started having questions. Yes, I was horrified um, by what was happening right. in Gaza. I, I've been to the Middle East before. And when I when I went there, because my, my husband is Armenian, so um, we, we had gone there for the first time. I had gone there for the first time in 2018. Okay. And what I saw and experienced in the Middle East was completely different than what um, we're told uh, here in America about, about, you know, Islam and people and, and, and that, you know, they're terrorists and that, that kind of thing. I did not experience that. The pe the people were um, hospitable, kind. Um, I, in fact, I felt safer um, in that part of the world than I did in Europe. Um, yes. Well, so. thank you, Kim. Listen, we're gonna come back to you. Okay. We are having a Brenda here. Brenda, can you turn on your um, video? Uh, hold on. Let me. Okay, figure this out, and I'm going to uh, Brother okay. Brian. Thank you, Brenda. Welcome, welcome. Uh, uh, Brother Brian, welcome to our podcast today. He's a, Brian is a very special person because his past is Jewish. I mean, he comes from a Jewish background. So, and, and, and he's a believer in Jesus Christ and he has a very uh, beautiful story how he came out of supporting uh, Zionist uh, beliefs to someone who is exposing the wrongs that are being done by state of Israel. So Brian, can you tell us a little bit about yourself first and then what made you see the truth? Yes, thank you very much. Yes, so um, I didn't grow up in a, uh, a religious home. My dad is Jewish, my mom is a, a Gentile. Um, uh, I had no religious upbringing whatsoever. Um, so uh, with that, no real uh, identity in, in as far as knowing about being Jewish. Um, I had visited Jewish relatives who are Orthodox, stuck to, you know, kosher laws, eating, you know, dietary restrictions. And um, but no, no real sense, identity, need to to have that part of my life. Um, you know, I got saved in my 20s. And uh, so from there, I, I discovered, you know, the, the Jewish Jesus, but not in the sense that, uh, you know, I made an issue of it or, or it had a big sense in my life. Um, uh, my dad uh, is second generation immigrant. My grandmother fled the pogroms in the 20s. Uh, thankfully, both my grandfather and grandmother made it through, made it out. She fled from Ukraine and a organization allowed her to immigrate to the States. And uh, my grandfather uh, came from Warsaw. And of course, I think we all know where my grandfather would have ended up, uh, you know, had he stayed there and not, not fled uh, prior to uh, World War II. So with that, I, I thank God for that. And then of course for salvation primarily. And, uh, you know, after I got saved, uh, a lot of the people I followed, the Hal Lindsey's, Grant Jeffries, yeah. uh, pretty much anybody. Uh, I watched a lot of TBN and stuff like that, CBN. Uh, you know, I, I just wanted to consume the word. I wanted anybody to teach me about anything about the Bible. And of course, with that, they, gl you know, gladly taught me about Zionism and Israel and support for Israel. And, and uh, uh, you know... And uh, from there, I started hearing the term, the refrain over and over again, uh, you know, God blesses those that bless the Jews. And it's interesting because I had read through the whole Bible by then. But then again, when, when people start teaching you things, that becomes the frame of reference. Mm -hmm. And uh, so with that, I, I just took that and started running with it. It wasn't, uh, Zionism really didn't take off for me till I went to visit Israel uh, my brother was studying at the University of Jerusalem. Uh, he spent a year there. I went to visit him as a young Christian of two years. 
Uh, from there, I've met Israelis, Jews. Uh, I actually heard a profound testimony of someone from Christ Church, which I'm sure you guys know. There was a a Orthodox, former Orthodox Jew that got saved from a vision of Christ. And so immediately he went from Orthodox to Christianity. And uh, so with that, uh, as as God was, was changing my heart, I was allowing darkness to come in by uh, through the seed of Zionism. And with that, you know, you can't completely love Jesus unless you love everyone. You know, he's, he's, he, Amen. he died for Amen. the world. Truth. And so, uh, so the, the, the seed of hatred or indifference to the plight of the Palestinians, they're, 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 you know, going back to 1948, just prior to that, uh, where they were being run out of towns, killed. I mean, it was just, just horrendous, uh, what happened. So I, uh, you know, started consuming everything and anything Zionism. If if there if if you told me of a Zionist ministry, uh, I was donating to it, and I've donated thousands. Mm -hmm. um, I actually flew two Jews with. Uh, I'm sure you guys are familiar with the ministry that I think uses Christians, the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, so that right there, and and uh, the sense of pride welled up within me, and uh, and this is a, a a gut check everybody needs to make that when you when you when you are elevating anybody over anybody else in this case the jews or israel uh it's a sense of pride and and, and idolatry and uh so from there um new other trips to israel to which i served with bridges for peace uh i've paid for soldiers meals while standing in line uh i actually was on the uh I was there in 2000 with Calvary Chapel, and we went to uh, the border to help those who were fleeing Lebanon. You guys know about that. And uh, Israel was taking them in, and I commend Israel for taking them in and, and absorbing them. Uh, but by the same token, if you're going to absorb them, you can absorb the Palestinians also um, and treat them exactly the same. That you, you have spoken some very powerful words here, and everybody needs to do self-check whoever yeah. is supporting Israel. And, mm -hmm. and you, as you said, that your father's side then was Jewish, not mother. So according to rabbis, you're not even a Jew, you know that. It's like, it's like, it's my situation too. <laughs> but so, because they go by the mother, by the way. But anyway, so what, how beautifully did he say that? Because that yes. sense of pride that you are mentioning, that was us, that was Steve and me. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. that sense of pride, I'm a Jew and Jewish people are a chosen nation and Gentiles were just added to that and we are somebody special. And like you said, it was a pride and we did have to check ourselves and we did not hear the plight of Palestinians when we were in Israel. And this is why we had to repent of it. So that was a beautiful call. Well, one thing that happens, and I'm sure Brother Brian, yourself, uh, Kim, and, Bre and Brenda, Sister Brenda as well, all you guys probably know, anytime you come out of something or you wake up to something's not exactly right, you go to the other extreme and then you have to come back to the middle again. So... Mm -hmm even as we begin to wake up okay the zionist theology is totally not right uh the, the the palestinians are being oppressed as a result of our own personal beliefs uh then it's like the jewish people get thrown completely under the bus but then you have to come back to that balance and say okay look like yana made a statement to me one time before she said you know we got to remember too there are many Jewish people, Israelis, as we would say, that were born there. This is all they've ever known their whole life. Uh, you know, it's just the fact that we want to bring a balance in this here, that we want to get Christians to realize, look, you got brothers and sisters that are Palestinian that are there. There have been so many Christians forced out of there. Uh, it's not even funny. I mean, Kim's ancestry would know this from Armenia. Uh, the genocide that happened to the Christian population there. And in fact, I heard 
a, a Russian, no, an Israeli speaking rabbi and a Russian speaking rabbi both speak about Azerbaijan and how that they were, they were paying back those populated, the Christian populations for things, crimes that had happened centuries ago in modern times. And wow. this is why, again, Israel has armed and funded Azerbaijan to attack, uh, to attack Armenia. So we won't wow, go into that's, that. That's another a, a uh, story on its own that we can have about 10 hour show, right? Yes. So, but listen, uh, let me go to uh, Brenda now. Welcome, Brenda. She has her Hello. own Zionist uh, background <laughs> as a very staunch Christian in the United States, loving <laughs> Jesus, but supporting Israel with all of her soul. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and then we're going to go back to Kim and, and back to Brian again. So I have a few questions for you guys. Go ahead, Brenda. Well, I've been in church most of my life since I was four years old, okay? And I still, ha I even, you know, I still have my children's Bible and my Bible that I was given for Christmas when I was in the fourth grade. I still have those, okay? And of course, we were always taught I'm not going to name denominations because I've been in, in my lifetime, I've been in a number of different denominations. Yeah. Okay. And they're all the same. I'm sorry, but, you know, they've got a few differences. This one believes this and this and that, but they're all the same, basically. And we were always taught that the first five books of my Bible are the, are the Torah, the, the Jewish Bible. I always, you know, I believe that. And in January of 2013, I was in with a group of people and some guy that I really didn't even know, but he, I don't know what in the world I said, he got real angry with me and he hatefully accused me of being a Zionist. Well, I had never heard the word. I had no idea what a Zionist was. So because I had never heard the word and I didn't know what it was, I was absolutely positive. I'm not a Zionist. And I I didn't cuss him out or anything, but I let him know in no uncertain terms that I wasn't anything such like that. And then the Lord brought y'all into my life seven and a half years ago. And I started listening to y'all. And... By the time y'all flew me down six summers ago to Orlando to help with the conference, and Yana, you and I stood in my my hotel room, and I was telling you, I am so shocked. I have learned so much from y'all, and I am so shocked because, and I told you then about the guy accusing me of having been a Zionist and what I said back to him. And I went, I had to learn and go, oh my gosh, I am a Zionist. Because I was all about support Israel. Oh, yay. You know, when Netanyahu was here in 2014 to speak to the president and speak to Congress, and I was, oh, yay, oh, yay. You know, wear a flag for, for Israel on my Facebook page, you know, and Oh yay! Oh yay! And and I I supported I I gave money to several different Israeli ministries over there in Israel, and um, I had a subscription to Israel My Glory magazine monthly magazine, mm -hmm. and um, and I was just absolutely shocked that yeah I was a Zionist yes. I was and I was and I and and I was bowing down basically what I was doing I was bowing down to them but the, the thing that also got me was learning about the Talmud because as you may recall I said to you I'm a Gentile what would I know about Talmud? you know I just when I first started hearing the word about maybe seven eight eight nine years ago whenever it was I just thought it was another word for the Torah. I had no idea it was anything different. Right. And I 
and I believed that that, you know, the modern state of Israel, I believe that they operated under the Torah. Well, when I heard about Talmud, I just thought, well, that's just another name for the Torah. Right. And that's exactly what's happening that a lot of Christians don't know yeah. that when uh, Jewish rabbis uh, speak the word Torah, they are really uh, referencing the Talmud, not yeah. the Old Testament. And that's and where the problem comes in so yes uh, uh, sister brenda we will be right back to you let me ask um kim here uh, now that you are understanding that support of the state of israel and its policies is really not uh it's not the way to go really when you're a christian do you have any persecution from your peers when you express that view or are you called anti-semite or do yes. you suffer that yeah yes absolutely yana and i i did not expect this um when i discovered what was written in the talmud i i read sev several excerpts or passages from it and um what was going on in gaza and my eyes were fully open to zionism and I was fully rejecting it. Um, the slightest mention, I mean, just the slightest mention of perhaps Israel is doing something wrong or, um, you know, it, it's take a look, let's, let's take a step back and look at what Israel's doing in Gaza and the West Bank. It was met with um, just intense, opposition and persecution in fact i've lost relationships over it wow that's and, yes and um it, it's you know you you're familiar with the shunning policy of, of watchtower mm -hmm. i never expected that from people um in other other religions or um you know just uh what i thought were bible believing christians and um and even my own family people in my own family uh are have um they're they're not speaking to me because of my stand um against zionism and and for me it's not so much that i am not for zionism and i don't believe in the 19 that 1948 is fulfillment of bible prophecy um for me it's also uh adhering to or following the scripture in ephesians i believe it's ephesians 6 11 where it says uh, avoid avoid um you know the wickedness and even expose it expose the darkness and so um i i began to expose zionism um and you know of, of course the the persecution got even worse so yes. um, well kim i can only tell you sister that you used to it from the watchtower <laughs> so you are well yeah. prepared for that so uh i uh, can understand that <laughs> uh, one thing i want to say too and i know this is what's very tough and this is why my wife has really been putting that pressure on me to really go back and and do the videos to help people uh, with this whole issue of Zionism, even though there are there's some very good uh, literature out there already where people have worked on this. But I, by God's grace, I do have a gift because of understanding the Hebrew language and things to really be able to look into this and dig deep into it. And I can only imagine what it's like, uh, like in Kim, in your case, and, and, and you're really, you're no different than anybody else, you know, people just get hammered with these passages, you know, it's like, well, okay, what are you going to do about this then? Well, right. the Bible says this, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. you know, so there's all kinds out there that, that cause those kind of problems that need to be addressed to help people. Okay. I'd also like to say one thing about something you said earlier, earlier, Steve, about finding a balance. Um, when I when when my eyes were first opened to to Zionism and the horrors of it all, I went through an, a period of time where I was very angry, and yeah. um, it it took some time to get over that and find balance and and understand mm -hmm. that it wasn't the entire population of Jewish people. Right. Yeah. And um, that not all Jews are Zionists. And 
And, um, but I went through a period where I was just very, very angry. And uh, some of your videos helped me understand um, that it's not all Jews. And, and I, you know, I just thank you for that. Yes, thank you, Kim. Now, Brother Brian, do you personally have any persecution from your family members or your peers and friends over the change of your paradigm? And you also mentioned before uh, you would like to recommend some books for the people to read. Yes. Well, I don't know if persecutions um, a little bit strong of a word because uh, compared to what the Palestinians have been through and are going through, okay. this pales. And also, um, you interviewed Mrs. Glass, and um, I personally spoke with the Orthodox Jewish lady, and her testimony mirrored Mrs. Glass perfectly. Yes. In fact, when I when I uh, I, I was reserved to say uh, that the that people from the synagogue of Satan are now running Israel and, you know, and the people involved with the establishment state of Israel. Uh, I, I thought for sure that this lady would get mad at me and she didn't. She, she agreed with me. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so with that, um, I was having coffee across from a pastor at the church I was going to. And I, I brought up how I go through, how I came through the idea uh, using scripture, which we should always use for everything. Um, and I remember in, in a, at a, a Bible uh, teaching one time where the pastor said, Abraham looked to the future, to the cross. Yes. And um, that stuck with me. Uh, and then as I started going through the Bible, I came to Galatians 3.16, which I call the bookend of, of 12.3, Genesis 12.3, to where it, the seed was meant to point to Christ. You know, so if the G Jews were chosen, um, and and they were to 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 to, to glorify God and show Him and sh be the light of the world to reflect Christ or coming Christ Messiah, that uh, Galatians three sixteen sums it up. Mm -hmm. And yes. uh, so I was telling this pastor, and I also I I brought him to Acts one six and seven, which to me is the slam dunk, um, and there could be others, but to me. When so when Jesus is with his disciples, and uh, he's talking about his coming kingdom. Okay, and a kingdom requires what a king. So who is to be that king? Obviously Jesus. He didn't talk about a nation being born in a day. He didn't talk about the, the the Jews coming from the four corners of the earth. All the Bible verses that we that I used to use that was used to, to convince me and and, and others. And, uh, and that's the ones that people use. So I talked to this pastor, and later on, I was in church doing coffee ministry, and I spoke to a gentleman, that, that was a very humble guy, and I told him what I said. I just, because the pastor mentioned that, uh, hey, uh, our church, myself, supports Israel. He's, he's from the Dallas Theological Seminary, by the way, which is very Schofield mm -hmm, um, influenced. And, um, and, and so he he said, and then the conversation went very antagonistic from his point of view, and uh, he didn't like what he was hearing, he's a Zionist, and, and, and also believed that we should support the pastor and what he says, and um, that, and so I said, with that, but I said, like, here's some Bible verses, and uh, with that, he, he got very, his demeanor changed to where I never foresaw this person becoming like this. And uh, wouldn't even shake my hand. I said, hey, let's just let's just be brothers. And he wouldn't shake my hand. With that, I got an email from the pastor, the one I had over coffee, and who heard this, me, me give my case against Zionism and the establishment of Israel. And he says, well, maybe you shouldn't serve anymore. Wow. Well, that brother, that's persecution. I mean, yeah, they even take you off. Yeah. The, and and, and what's sad was, was the way he handled it. Um, he sent an email to the the chief server servant of of it, and also to everybody. Curtis had copied everybody, you know, to let them know that Brian decided uh, not to serve anymore, and so hence I, I don't go to that church anymore. Um, by the way, I also found that church took the PPP loans, um, but uh, but also so um, so I, I I went to a I'm going to call out Calvary Chapel here because they admit. To being um, dispensational and, oh, yeah, and also pro-Zionist, mm -hmm. and 
So uh, afterwards, that you know, I was able to talk to the pastor, and I led him through the scriptures, and I said, "Hey, it's very clear." And uh, Acts one six and seven, you know, and and by the way, the disciples did not bring up those Bible verses. Um, right. And I think Brother Steve, you you know, you they would be very familiar with nation born in a day and 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 all these other verses. They didn't bring that up, and uh, so Jesus settled the issue about the nation of Israel. He didn't talk about the Romans rising up against the Romans and how they'd have to create a state, which they could have done. And uh, so with that, um, the, the pastor said, well, it's just Calvary Chapel doctrine. Well, here's another challenge I'm going to throw out there to, to pastors and Zionist Christians is let's go with the scripture says, not with what your denomination, your family, what, whatever. And uh, kind of like what, what I do. And so with my dad, what's interesting is, so just like my Christian testimony of going, being, you know, coming to Christ as a, as a Jewish believer, um, uh, I, I came to, actually, I came to Christ in fullness, um, coming out of Zionism. You want to talk about fullness, being completed Jew or whatever, you know, it's, it's coming, it's, it's totally uh, all Jesus and, and no preference to any man, like Jesus talks about. And exhibit it. And uh, so uh, with my dad, I'm finding, you know, he's going, seeing me from a Zionist fanatic, rabid Zionist, um, to to now the one that, that defends the Palestinians, but loves the Jews, you know? And I'm going to say this emphatically, you cannot completely love the Jews until you love the Palestinians, etc., Wow. Thank you. That's wow. another powerful what a wow. Good what a powerful statement. That that's you always have those punches here, Brian. That's amazing. That's exactly the truth. You yes. can't love the Jews unless you love the Palestinians. Yeah. That is so powerful, brother. Well, tell me, tell us about those books you mentioned them. So, do you have recommendations of some books that maybe dispensationalists should start reading? Well, yeah, and then I have to give a shout out to you guys. So, this is where where you're 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 beautiful, humble, loving ministry comes into play to where you recommend, um, and it's on PDF file. I think you guys have it through your, your, on your website. Um, uh, it's the, the, the Holocaust victims accuse. Yes. And by the way, uh, you can't find it on Amazon or actually I think I saw it advertised for $400 once eBay can't find it. I think you guys have mentioned it's actually banned in Israel. That should it tell is. you something. Mm -hmm. Um, now if you want to con contend and I know, There'll be people out there that will contend that book and the quotes. Um, so the two quotes that really disgusted me, and if you're a Zionist and you think God um, started at the nation of Israel's fulfillment of Bible prophecy, I have two quotes from elitist Jews. Uh, one that a, uh, a Polish Jew um, or, or uh, was, was not worth uh you know the the, the um, nation of israel establishing it and another one was the blood of the jews greases the wheels to establish the nation of israel i mean th those two right there should should get you yes, thinking i get remember you it well yes yeah, because so, they are um, they are willing to shed blood of their own to accomplish their ends and yes. that's that's sad that's what's and about to happen now yeah, and 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 my heart goes out to the. Uh, and by the way, the Israel has a right to exist. Uh, they're a nation; it's done, um, uh, and they have a right to defend itself. But sure. with that, you know, extreme caution, Geneva Convention type laws apply. And uh, but the other book that you guys recommended, and and I know you've talked to Chuck Baldwin and others; it's really become popularized. Um, is the uh, ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians. So let's say you, you you doubt the Holocaust victims accused. You, it's not a, it's not available. Whatever, you can't deny Ben Gurion's quotes along with his generals, uh, and it's very well sourced by Elon Pape. Okay, yes. uh, that um, they had every intention. Golda Meir saw what was going on. She looked the other way because why? Because the goal was state of Israel and Zionism, and yeah. You know, uh, I, I also want to uh, point to another author who is a Jewish author. And interestingly enough, uh, almost every book I recommend is by Jewish authors. I mean, the, the Jewish people themselves have exposed Judaism and policies of state of Israel. 
and there are wrongs. So uh, we are not against the Jewish people. We love the Jewish people, but because we love them, because we love them, we want them to come out of this bloodshed, genocide, and and uh, Talmudic uh, brainwashing. Uh, there is a book by Israel Shahak. Uh, this is an amazing author. He was a chemistry professor. He studied, uh, taught at the Jerusalem University, and he wrote several books that I highly, highly recommend everyone uh, gets. It's called Jewish Fundamentalism in Israel, second edition by Israel Shahak, S-H-A-S-H-A-H-A-K. That's how you spell his name. Uh, another one is um, Open Secrets, Israeli Foreign and Nuclear Policies by Israel Shahak. Okay. Um, well, start with these two. Start with these two books. He is also a Jewish author who translated uh, Hebrew writings of uh, Menachem Mendel Schneerson. He translated for us what this man was teaching. And that's how we could see, because a lot of people don't speak Hebrew, especially Americans. They just believe what their Zionist pastors tell them in a church. So they have no idea right and and that was very much anti-gentile agenda how gentiles don't have uh divine souls only jews and they will be slaves to the jews so it's this is a very important author that you get all of his books and start reading because things you will find in his books will shock you shock you to the core and your eyes are going to start uh opening up so do we still have brenda here no, Brenda no, has fallen off. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I wanted to ask her because she just told me she did have persecution. Somebody just um, attacked her for her views on Israel and defending Palestinians. So maybe next time we can bring her in again. Um, you have already mentioned how our ministry helped you. So we are glad we need to have this type of um, testimonies just to know and, and check on us you know our own check and balances that we are um, doing work that's good uh, and and influencing lives for good that's very important for us uh, that we know that so and I know brother Brian that for you you have you have your own critical thinking ability and you you saw things kind of on your own and then uh some of things we say just confirmed it for you as you already said and for you Kim you said that you did listen to us and then and then you were able to you had a humble heart to listen and it, like kind of uh, look at it from outside like you know you gotta kind of come out and look at it from outside and, and and start examining uh what's happening and you know both sides of the story and you were able to see for yourself that dispensational zionist christianity there is something wrong especially now what's going on and like jesus said look at their fruits by their fruits you're going to know who they are right so what are the fruits? So let's talk about a little bit about fruits of, of Israel, of the state, political state of Israel right now. They are having a far right religious fundamentalist government, by the way, far right religious fundamentalist yeah. government. They came to power with Netanyahu and his cohorts, uh, the Smotrich and Ben Gavir. And I don't know, we probably don't have time to go into this very deeply, but uh, their policies are actually Talmudic policies. And the policies of the Talmud is uh, get rid of Amalek, right? So, Brian, do you want to say something about that? Well, the uh, you brought up the fact that um, about the uh, Noahide laws. Yes. Um, of course, we don't want to get into that. But... Um, I have a caution. Uh, I get to serve with a, a lot of ministries in Israel. I told you Bridges for Peace, Calvary Chapel. Um, uh, and, and I did a lot of things for the Jews. But but the, the thing is, um, one thing I'll tell you, too, I think you guys know about, and I talked to a Calvary Chapel Bible teacher there in Jerusalem, and I asked him the question, are a lot of Christians turning from Jesus to Judaism? 
And there's a famous person there. I don't remember his name, but he said yes. So, and, and of course, this gets into the Hebrew roots type stuff. But my caution is to the ministries there, if you're going to stay Zionistic, um, that uh, your time is limited in coming because they're they're using you now and, the, and, the, and then they will come after you and like this Smoltrich guy and others, and you guys have brought this up, that uh, families will be separated. So let's say you're Jewish, married to somebody there or, or whatever, uh, you will be evicted from Israel. Uh, uh, and um, your use of the Torah, which I guess they're married to, you guys can get into that. You'll have to quit doing that. And um, so persecution is coming to 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 the believers in Israel. Oh, now it froze up again. Yes, and, and you're absolutely correct on that because they start with Palestinians and what's done to Palestinians next are the Christians. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Kim, do you want to add to that? What about their fruits, fruits of Israel? How do you see their fruits now? It, yes, um, I, I think that the, the fruits that they've demonstrated are probably one of the most, um, the strongest uh, driver for me to understanding Zionism and you know the establishment of Israel in 1948 came by the sword and you know of course Jesus said um, he who bears the sword sh shall perish by the sword and and that didn't you know I could see clearly that there was a conflict and and so um also, just their um, their supremacist attitude towards non-Jews, and and you know that didn't that that didn't um, harmonize with anything Jesus taught, mm -hmm. um, especially in Galatians. You know where Paul said, "There's neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female, um, free man nor um, bond servant," and so uh the just the fruits alone um that they demonstrated uh you know just conflicted with everything that jesus taught mm -hmm. um he, he taught kindness and love you, you know love and pray for your enemies mm -hmm. and um yes you know so it, it was very easy to see uh the fruits that that zionists demonstrate and and draw conclusions um, on, on what we're dealing with. Absolutely. Steve, do you want to add to mm. this, like, especially on, on the point that a lot of Christians today who are in dispensational theology forget the basic tenets of Christianity and a new covenant. They forget the law of Christ, which is a law of love. Exactly. I mean, it comes down to what he said. You know, he said there's the whole law hangs on to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind and soul and love your neighbor as yourself. And I am totally watching the very things that Jesus said there today be trashed mm -hmm. by the majority of uh well i don't want to say the majority of christianity but especially those that that have fallen into the trap of the pro-zionist movement um you know and and because and 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 i understand why that trap the trap was set not by the the church it was set by the schofield zionist theology that was that was intentionally placed there so that people would begin to teach that Israel was going to return to their homeland in the modern days that we're living in now. Uh, this was all set up as nothing that the early church fathers believed. And so they had to infiltrate in order to bring this about. And so a lot of people, they, they have these feelings, these beliefs, and they're based on lies, but they don't know they're based on lies. Right. And therefore, they're willing to totally trash everything that Jesus ever said and they don't even realize they're doing it. This is why we see literally written right in the book of Revelation, you're blind, naked, and miserable, and don't even know it. That's, yeah, yeah exactly. So uh, we are kind of going to wrap this up. We can have more meetings like this. I'm inviting the public, like if you are watching this video and you used to be a dispensational Christian with the Zionist views and worshipped Israel instead of, you know, sometimes we don't realize 
when we were we were at the same place ourselves so we are extending understanding to you we are extending grace to you because there is time and chance still to to kind of look at it examine it and come out of of those beliefs uh so this is by no means judgment uh, or meant to be judgmental this is an invitation let's debate this let's debate the scripture let's look at this with without the zionist glasses without the dispensationalism glasses let's examine history of how even dispensational theology came because in a in a when you look at the linear time the dispensational theology in Christianity is this tiny short, okay? We all might be here 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. That's not enough time to understand, grow up and from childhood and to understand that that type of Christianity wasn't here for 2000 years. So let's just look at history. How did it come about? How did it infiltrate Christianity and why today's happenings in politics What's happening in Middle East? Why is this even happening? And should we as Christians support this in good heart with, with clean conscience? We, we are to be peacemakers. We are to love even enemies. And I'm not even saying Palestinian people are not enemies, okay? And we love all people, not to mention we have our own among them, Christians who suffer by the policies of Israel. They are suffering and we are not extending our help and love to them. But Zionist Christianity is extending love, monetary help to Jewish rabbis who support Talmudic policies. So let's wake up. Let's debate this. If you're listening, Write us an email, israelinewslive at protonmail.com. If you have a story of your, your own journey, similar to Brian, to Kim, to Brenda that you just heard, write to us. We can have those types of podcasts and, and share these stories because a lot of people are starting to see they are coming out. So thank you, Brian. Thank you, Kim. You thank are you. an encouragement to the body of Christ. I wouldn't mind having you on again, and we can narrow our subject if you wish. Today was kind of like introduction. So the people, when they're coming out of Zionism, they can see they're not alone. They're not alone. There is a lot of people waking up right now. So yeah. let's get together and let's get these things squared away. Let's square away our history. How did it happen? What is dispensational theology? what New Testament teaches, what Talmud teaches, who should we support? Should, should we be warmongers or peacemakers? Okay, according to Christ. So that's basically what I wanted to bring to you by today's podcast. And Steve, I'll let you just end the, the program. Yes, thank you very much, guys, for joining us today. Uh, I am going to take and create a, um, a playlist for uh, maybe I don't know what I'm going to call it yet, something like breaking the bond, but I'll announce it once I actually create that uh, that playlist there, because I have already done a lot of videos that do that do go back and challenge the doctrinal uh, views for Zionism. And, uh, and 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 clearly, by the way, I don't believe that every prophecy of the Bible is already fulfilled either. But uh, but when we're dealing with those prophecies that did get fulfilled, we're trying to clean those up fix the problem so that people can better understand and also make it easier for you guys to be able to find it uh, so that you can go through that list and say okay this is what i need to know about to be able to help because it's not to i don't like to look at it as defeat someone it's to look at to try to help someone when they're when they're coming against you and saying but you know you're not looking at this scripture you're not looking at that scripture so I'll try to make that to make it a little bit easier for people to find those videos out there. So thank you guys for joining us today. And uh, thank you thank all you, that are listening. Uh, and, and God bless you all and have a wonderful day. God bless you. Thank, thank you. you. God bless. You can hang on just a second, guys. I'm going to just hit the stop record button.